Some things are out of our control. One of those things right now is inflation. So what I want to do today is to be able to talk to you guys about something you can control as far as your budget, and that is household expenses. I have 20 ways that you can save money on your household budget. If we can control what we can control, maybe we can feel a little bit more stable in this time when costs are rising and we're seeing our wallets pinched more. We're not being able to save as much. So every little bit counts. So I found 20 of the best ways that we save money around our house that I wanna share with you today. If you are new here, my name is Jennifer and I talk about simple living and saving money. If any of that interests you, make sure you click on that subscribe button. The first one is LED light bulbs. These, we have not changed a light bulb in a lamp or in a ceiling fixture or, you know, a can light in four years since we've been in this house. LED light bulbs. All I can do is think about back to the years when my mom would go and buy light bulbs, we need light bulbs, and she'd shake the thing, you know, just to make sure the filament wasn't broken inside. Does anybody remember that? If you do, put it down in the comment below. But, you know, the cost of light bulbs over and over, if you don't, uh, haven't done so yet to call your electricity company because I remember them doing promotions where they'd send out light bulbs, LED light bulbs, so you could change over to those. So check that out. That is a great way to save money. Set a timer on your showers. I am a huge lover of very long, hot, you know, walk out looking like a lobster showers. However, I've had to cut back you know, water bills are going up, just like everything else if you have city water. And you know, you can get in there and you can spend 10 minutes and not realize it's even gone by because you've been completely not conscious of what's going on. So setting a timer, maybe at five minutes and seeing how quickly you can get out of that shower rather than just letting your money, you know, water run down the drain. Using multi-purpose cleaning products can save you a ton of money. I know you may be you know, so interested in getting all these new fun things to try out for the toilet bowl, for the shower, for the ceramic tile, because you see it on some of these cleaning YouTubers channels. Keep in mind, some of these products, they are paid to talk about. <laughs> Otherwise, you really don't need that kind of stuff. It's just a marketing ploy. They think that you, it, it's a way for them to make, the, the big companies to make more money is to sell you a specific product for certain things. When you could use one product, you know, vinegar water and some dish soap or uh, I don't know, any of those DIY cleaning things or a multi-purpose cleaner and it would handle everything. You'd have less crap to store, less to carry around while you're cleaning and less money that you'd have to spend on it. Keep your pantry stocked with staples, not staples like, you know, that go on paper. I'm talking about staples, beans, rice, pasta, spaghetti sauces. This is not only gonna save you money, but it's gonna give you a sense of comfort to know you have some backup staple foods that aren't, uh, you know, don't perish as quickly. Also, if you can stock up on them when you're at an Aldi or a Walmart or you know whatever discount grocery store you can find versus going to the bigger stores because you have to get the you know some other items there that you can only get there um, and spending more money and premium dollars on those things so go ahead see what you need um, pantry staple see what within your the things you eat that you use such as let's say you eat a lot of pasta or a lot of kidney beans or a lot of lima beans whatever Stock up on those things. Make sure your pantry is full. If you have not cut the cable yet, what are you waiting for? <laughs> All I gotta say is that stuff is outrageously expensive now. I don't have the time, number one, to sit around and watch TV. I know some people do and they enjoy it, but really do you need that many channels? Do you watch all those channels? Is it possible that if you wanted to really get your money's worth out of it, you'd watch all those channels and that's all you would ever be able to do because to get your money's worth out of it, you'd have to sit there all day and watch TV. I mean, it's just something to think about. And bone to pick with you, Netflix is going through the roof too. I don't know, at some point, Netflix might be like cable. The next frugal tip might be cut your Netflix subscription because it's way too expensive. I just got an alert that it's going up. It seems to go up a couple of bucks every single year. At some point, it's gonna get too expensive, right? Let your cleaning products do the work. Oftentimes what you will see people do is spray on the cleaning product and wipe it off. You may as well have just wiped, sprayed water on the counter and wiped it off. And then like, oh, the gunk's still there. Spray it again, wipe. 
No. If you read the directions on some of these cleaning products, people don't do this. It says you need to let it sit there 30, 60, 90 seconds. Let it sit and do its work. And actually, I remember somebody telling me about this. This is not cleaning products, but they said in the shower, a lot of people use or let conditioner sit on their hair versus shampoo. But they said, no, you're supposed to let shampoo sit on your hair and then wash it out like three minutes and wash it out. I did that. Oh my gosh, the volume, the how, the how clean my hair was. Anyway, you may not be into shampoo or conditioner and you might be doing you know, more natural stuff, but just wanted to share that idea. But the, the idea that we need to let the cleaning products do the work, you're going to, uh, you know, not have to wipe it as many times and you're not going to waste product because you keep spraying and wiping it off immediately. Figure out ways to reuse your leftovers in more creative ways. A lot of people, you know, give me the uh, about, you know, leftovers, but there are so many fun ways. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas that you guys have shared with me. So I'm going to share it with everybody else. So somebody mentioned like getting a big uh, Costco chicken and taking that chicken. Maybe you'll have that chicken one night with green beans and potatoes and then the next night take it shred it up and make a chicken tortilla soup and then the next night or maybe the night after you take it and you put it on a flatbread and you have barbecue sauce and some red onion then you have a barbecue chicken flatbread or you can shred it up and make chicken tacos that is one of those uses another one is chili whether you do an all vegetarian chili or a meat chili a bean chili whatever it is to have your chili one night and then maybe a couple of nights later, take that chili and put it on top of a potato, sweet potato or a regular baking potato. That is a great way to reuse leftovers without feeling like you're eating the same thing over and over. Do a potluck get together. I know people talk about this one, but really think about this. This can be so much fun. Remember our family reunions, if you ever went to those and all of the food that everybody had, you had like three different versions of hash brown casserole. So you all sat around and determined who made the best hash brown casserole, but you, you know, didn't tell didn't tell Aunt Betty that it wasn't hers, right? This what is just a fun thing to do if you get together with people or if you just are tired of going out and paying the premium cost at restaurants these days. You know, saying if somebody has a family birthday, we'll have everybody bring over um, a a dish rather than a present. It's just such a fun way to get together, hang out, and try some new fun foods. Go through all of your subscriptions. This is one of my favorite things to do and to tell you as a good idea to see what's going on with your money. Every three months or six months, um, or probably the minimum that I would say to do it, but write down all of your subscriptions because nowadays subscriptions are just a thing. Um, it's, it's everywhere. You know, you've got your workout app subscription, your Spotify subscription, your this subscription, your that subscription, and it may seem like a little bit here or there, but you may not realize how many you have and how much you're actually, you know, shelling out every single week, uh, month. Write them all down give them a rating, let's say one to five. One, I don't ever use this. Five, I use it every single day. And maybe those ones that are ones or twos or maybe even threes, you realize you actually don't need and it's not worth the money. Doing this every so often is a great way to keep a check on how many subscriptions you have. Use the delicate cycle on your washing machine and your dryer. This is a great way not only to save money, but to actually benefit your clothes. If you, unless your clothes are like super dirty, I'm talking you're in construction, you're, you paint, you know, you, you work out like a hardcore there. I don't see any reason to use the big full cycle on your washing machine and your dryer. There's got to be a short cycle, a delicate cycle that you could use, and that's going to cut down on cost of electricity and water. Create a budget. This is the number one way to cut expenses in your household. If you don't know what's going on, what's coming in or what is going out, I don't care if you've got 10 people in the household or one, it is something that is a great thing to do. I don't care if you are, you know, barely scraping by or you have money coming out your, you know, ears. It is a great thing to do just to kind of know. And I have a great video about 
exactly how I budget that I will link down below. It goes into great detail. I pulled together a bunch of different uh, budgeting ideas and came up or kind of tweaked it to work best for me. So maybe check it out if you're interested in, you know, putting a, a budget together for the first time or maybe the budgeting method you've been using isn't working out for you. Meal prepping saves you so much money because you will not be eating out last minute for dinners or for lunches. Meal prepping is just one of those things that people, they get kind of a, a negative thought about, I think. They think that it's those little um, containers that have you know sweet potatoes, the rice, the vegetables, the chicken, and then you have to eat that every single night because you've seen those, right? You've seen those videos. I, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about meal prepping, cutting up the vegetables on a Sunday, cr making that chili on a Saturday that you're going to eat on Sunday and you're going to put on your potatoes on Wednesday. Meal prepping ahead of time saves you time, saves you money, and it's just going to save you from you know going out and spending way too much money um, at restaurants because those places have gone way high. I mean, they had to. We see how much food costs are now, you know, They've, they're seeing that as well. By generic, I assure you that there is not a food distribution, you know, making place for every single spaghetti sauce out there because not possible or all of the potato chips. They do not differ very much from the generic to the name brand. Now, some people swear by certain name brands. You've got people who like Hellman's mayonnaise or Duke's mayonnaise. I eat Hellman's vegan mayonnaise because it's delicious and tastes like regular mayonnaise to me. But when I ate regular mayonnaise, I didn't see a difference. I guess I grew up just eating whatever was the cheapest that my mom got. So there wasn't a, you got developed a taste for this or for that. Now I will say that there are some uh, brands that I don't like generic. Like I won't buy the Aldi green beans because they have tons of stems in them. Maybe they'll fix that at some point. Um, but I also won't buy Prego uh, spaghetti sauce, the name brand spaghetti sauce. That stuff is watered down like nobody's business. But one of the things you just need to think about is step outside the box and look at the unit price on things like the ketchup versus you know, the Heinz ketchup versus the store brand and see how much the unit price difference is. If it's half, then you better believe we're going to be eating the generic brand. We eat generic pretty much everything except for you know, green beans can of cream beans in this house. Just like your washer and dryer, use the light cycle on your dishwasher. Do a good job of scraping off those plates. You know, don't, you know, do your dishes in the sink with all of that water and then put them in the dishwasher. There is a lot of people that do that. That, <laughs> you're only washing them twice. If you're gonna hand wash them, just go ahead and hand wash them. But if you're put, using the dishwasher, unless you've got, you know, a ton of stuff in there or some really stuck on stuff, then it's really probably not necessary that you turn on the you know full on cycle or that you put on the heat dry. Rather than the heat dry, just bring them out, shake them out a bit, dry them off. The heat dry doesn't work all that wonderful about getting them completely dry anyway, if you ask me. Adjust the thermostat. Maybe you need to bump it one or two down or maybe one or two up depending upon the season. This can make a big difference in your electricity bill. Now, you might have that little person in the house that somehow you know bumps it up or bumps it down when they're feeling a little hot or feeling a little cold. So you might need to find that little thermostat um, minion that's doing that. Maybe you you know do like they have it at some places where they put one on with a lock and a key. You can't get into the thing. You know, do what you gotta do. Hello? Yeah? No, I don't have a landline anymore. Do you still have a landline? <laughs> you know. Uh, not necessary. It, pretty much everybody has a cell phone attached to their face. Uh, so I don't think landlines are a necessity. I think my mother still has a landline and she gets spam calls all the time. So that would get on my nerves. I can't handle that. And then the thing, you know, rings and rings and you really can't turn those ringers off that much. So I would rather just have the cell phone. I haven't had a landline my entire adult life since I moved out. Don't run the water while you're brushing your teeth or washing your hands. The same thing as the shower. If you're brushing your teeth, turn it off. If you are washing your hands and you got the soap and you're kind of getting all soaps and sudsy and bubbly, right? Turn it off for just a second, get it all sudsy and put it back under there. That's the great thing about some of those automatic ones at 
um, out at places, but I almost wonder which one's more wasteful, the battery that they have to keep changing in the automatic one or the amount of water that they don't use. I don't know. You know, it's a give or take. My last one is to put a towel in the dryer. This will reduce the drying time. How it really works, I'm not sure. Just put it in there and watch how quickly your clothes get dry. I hope you enjoyed these. Some of them may seem small, but if you add all of them up, they're really going to help. And what you're going to discover is if you're just coming into this frugal life or you're just seeing new things on how to save money, you know, some of these you probably have heard of, but maybe one or two you really didn't think about. So if those help you, then wonderful. But over time, they're going to save you money um, when you, because you're going to become more conscious of other things that you can do to reduce expenses in your household. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.